everyone, welcome to another wonderful edition of the Inside Out Show. My name is Sandra Eze, and yes, my lovely audience, you are amazing. Thank you for being here. Beautiful people, I love them. I mean, this show is about me and my audience and Charles on the social media. How hey, are you, Charles? I'm fine. How are you Man doing? In black. I love your hair. Thank you. Is that your real hair? It's like. You know? Yeah, like Wakanda forever. You, you've seen the movie, right? You've seen the movie. You've seen the movie. <laughs> you look nice. So you're back to black, yeah? Yeah, yeah, back to black. You look something's different about your face. I, I think I'm, I'm cuter, right, guys? I'm finer today. I'm just, you know, more put you're together. So you know, yeah. <laughs> but you look great, though. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay, so um, we're paying each other compliments because today we are celebrating everything beautiful about our body. Today we're discussing a topic that is very, very important. Uh, we're discussing body shaming. Now the thing is, body shaming has always been there, but since the advent of social media, it's like it just skyrocketed to 200%. You know, every nook and cranny you look, you have people talking down on other people, be it in school, celebrities, average man, everybody is talking down on somebody. Why are we doing that? Why do we have a lot more people losing confidence on their body or their looks, the way God created them? This and so many more uh, issues is what we're tackling today on the show, the Inside Out show. So I'll be introducing you to my guest right after the break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> discussing body shaming that's right and right now it's time to introduce you to my panelists who would help me discuss this topic body shaming starting with success Abu Idris who is director sale entertainment media thank you for coming thank you. Thank you. moving on to black satino on-air personality and blogger thank you for coming and Mr. Chukwemeka Fred Abata, who is founder of CFA Tech Nigeria. Thank you. <laughs> Finally, Precious I Ajono, mind therapist. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so let's start this discussion because I know this is all of us here at some point or the other have experienced body shaming at some point or the other, including myself. Maybe I'll share mine during uh, the show. But Precious, let me throw this to you. You're the mind therapist. What is body shaming? So there, there's several definitions like with anything. But body shaming is the idea that we should have a perfect body image. And anyone in the, all the 7 billion people in the world who doesn't conform to that idea of what the perfect body is, there's something wrong with you. And then most times you will find people start to shame you, you know, make you feel a certain way because you don't conform to the idea of what a female body should look like or a male body should look like. Mm -hmm. Success, you are, I'm throwing this at you, Success. Um, first of all, let's, let's hear your, your story. Okay. <laughs> Um, when it comes to body shaming, I've really experienced it when I was growing up, mm -hmm. I know. And um, mine was to the extent that I don't even know the way I look. I didn't, I didn't know I was beautiful in my own way. Oh. I was actually thinking I was the ugliest. Yeah, the reason was in school, they called me um, Fatty Bombo. <laughs> <laughs> And, I know that term. And uh, sometimes, uh, like, <clears throat> some say I have um, long lips. And, you know, I was, like, feeling I was the ugliest. And uh, coming to the background where I came, grew up, maybe because of the religio uh, religious uh, background, the kind of denomination, the church we are going to, I was born into. So I don't actually know how I, how I look. We don't have time to look at Miro or that. So one day, I was going out with my mom and we bought the bus. Somehow, I just saw the side mirror. I just looked into the side. I just looked and I was seeing a very beautiful girl. I was in SS2 then. I was like, I, I turned back and said, oh, this girl is fine. I was looking for the person, real. And I didn't see, I was trying to like, 
And is Not that me? Person. No, I didn't know I was at least. I, 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 that's when I knew that I was. But then, the damage has been done already. Mm -hmm. I already have this inferiority. Sometimes, even when I was in high institution, I, I like talking, you know. You know me. I like talking. So when I'm talking, I like, I, will, I want to bring some kind of talk. So I, know I, I know I'm not beautiful, but, you know, but be, because of the, 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 the experience I've had, you know, uh, body shaming from 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 my classmates yes. and my parents we are not having it true they are not ki the kind of parent that will say oh sweetie you look beautiful oh sweetie you look no you're you, you you're okay so uh, that's the experience I do. okay thank you for sharing that story uh, we'll get back to you black satino <laughs> I love that name. It just takes me back to I don't know, Spanish language or something. Anyway, so um, you are an on-air personality and obviously a celebrity in the public eye. So it's even harder for you. And I understand you've had some body shaming experiences. Would you mind sharing that with us, please? Yes, um, um, this is good. I mean, the fact that you are actually taking your time to let people know that this has to stop. Let's come out and talk about it. That's a brilliant one. I should applaud you for that. Thank you. Um, yes, my own was not the size shaming. My own, <laughs> on, on the other side, was color shaming. I, of course, obviously, oh. I am black. That's mm -hmm. an S. That's where my name came off, Black Satino. Um, I wanted to get into the media world. I was I was doing a nine to five. I wanted to get um, a proper media job because I mean I could I was blogging at the time. I wanted to go on air and all of that together. So um, the, there's this particular um, media house. I'm just going to keep the name on code. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I tried to apply to the media house, and um, my experience was horrible because I mean after going from 500 to 100 to 50 to 20 to the of 10 or five of us. So we're left with five, and sadly, the man just came out, told me outrightly, I can't employ you, I'm going to have to employ a fair lady, because that's what we need for the job. And I told myself, I mean, out of everything, I'm certain I'm perfectly better than like this lady when You're it comes to um, delivery and all of that. And it just got to me, I went back to my, um, um, I started crying, I could not go out every day of my life, I would think, was I not good enough for this? I mean, why, why was this happening to me? I mean, it was so horrible. And this started from when I was young, um, growing up, that name of Blackie. <laughs> that was what they called yeah, that's the word they told me that time. Uh, I mean, literally, I could say that the people around my vicinity probably never knew my name, my original name. They were always just calling me. Um, some, if they want to fungicide, they will call me Ebony, but it was always Dudu, Blackie, you know, this kind of very horrible name. Mm -hmm. And my parents did not stop mm -hmm. them. It kept on thinking in my head. Were your parents aware they were calling you those yes. names? Yes. At some point, it was my mom's brother or my mom's um, uh, friends. They would come to us and say, ah, ah, Blackie or Dudu. And they'd be like, ah, for real, do I have a name? And that's mm. stuck into my head. Now, mm. that's where psychology comes in. It's stuck into my head for a long time. I kept on thinking, okay. So when I went for the audition and I got that um, rejection, I told myself, okay, that's certainly it. It's, it's I'm definitely not good enough. It cannot just be. Mm. And it just So it, that your complexion was in your was, way. Was not good enough. It was in the way from my success and all mm -hmm. of that. Um, but um, Thankfully, I became so prayerful. Then one day, I, I made a video. I think the video went viral also. I made a video and I told myself, okay, I'm going to start bleaching now. Is that, if that's what they want, if you think my talent is not good enough, I'll start to bleach. And all. So I got a lot of, um, I got a lot of friends advise me and I just, I spoke to my pastor and told me, you know what, you're just better off yourself. Do your mm. thing. And I started this YouTube page and voila. Mm. Wow. Okay. So now you're using it for profit. I know. Everybody's <laughs> supporting me now. <laughs> so, uh, um, Chukwa Mecca, you are a cyber analyst. Now, we notice that even celebrities, there is this thing trending now, clapbacks, where you sort of, let's say I tell you, oh, I don't like the fact you're wearing glasses, and maybe you're the celebrity. You just go, you know what? Your village people do you, or just all this, like, we're becoming more antagonistic. Why? Because everybody feels like they, if I don't like the fact that you're wearing glasses, I'll just point it out and say, hey, I don't like the fact that you're wearing glasses. We are too blunt, or we just really talk down on people online. Why is that? Is there a way to, to, to curb that? 
Well, thank you for having us on the show. Uh, yeah. uh, unfortunately, I wish I'd bring good news, but the reality is that um, there is very little you can do when it comes to the world of online. Because mm -hmm. with online, there is no border. Everyone is virtual. Just like she said, her friends went behind her to open other books. So, so let me first of all say to everyone watching, you know, the reality is that you've got to deal with yourself from your mind. Okay, um, the online world really cannot help you if you don't have, if you don't know who you are. If you don't have a strong personality, if you don't believe in yourself, if you don't love yourself, then you may not um, enjoy it online because the online world is virtually horrible. different. Exactly. You know, so, so when it comes to things like body shaming, so the reality is that what are your options? You know, your options are basically to either shut down the person's account mm -hmm. or report the person for inappropriate content. Uh, sorry, let me, let, me, let, yes. me, let me ask you this <clears throat> before you move uh, forward. Why is it that it's easier? Like, if I'm her friend right now, if I'm Satino's friend, I won't come up straight and tell her, you know what, I don't like your complexion, but I could go online and make such horrible comments. What is it about social media that makes people just lose their bridle and just run? <laughs> what is it? Well, we, we live in a world of, where social media makes it very easy to live in the world of self-defeat. You know, uh, you lie to yourself. You lie, so you see people's pictures, you envy people, you know, what people, what people show you gets to you. It's all well. So, so this is my. This is where I pray. But the truth is that it's virtually all lies. Okay, uh, it always looks greener, but it, it isn't green. That's the truth. You know. Mm. So it's easier for people to hide and because I mean, no, nobody. For example, guys don't. Okay, guys don't have the confidence to ask ladies out now. Everything is done virtually. People don't yeah. talk to themselves anymore. You know, everything is done virtually. So we're living in a world where, as human contact is um, getting lesser. People are becoming less confident, and that's affecting. <laughs> that's making it difficult. That's making it difficult for you to see something, and you can't be bold to say, "Hey, I don't like this." You have to go and hide another somebody to say that because that's that's the, that's the the sad thing about what social media has turned into. Now, the guys who probably developed it didn't pan out. They didn't plan for it to pan out this way. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that is the way it is. And if you are a social media user. You must understand that you have to, it's your responsibility to draw some boundaries, okay? And, and make sure people don't cross that boundaries. If people cross that boundaries, take a quick decision. It's either you cut the person as a friend, or, I mean, that's the way I do it. Because it, otherwise, you find out that you are having psychological problems because of the virtual world that, that is not real. Mm -hmm. Things that are not real will start affecting you mentally, you know? And the truth of the matter is that uh, the, the challenges of mental health issues will be on the rise, simply because of what people see online. Sure. <laughs> Coming up next on the show. We are all unique in our own ways. We have our own beauty. It was when I grew up, I got to know that I have a very sweet eyes. You know, I'm not like, oh, you eyes are... Now, if I were you in that situation, okay. you I know what I would do. What would you, you do? I, I, I would, I would, honestly, I would do that because you I take my kid. Yes. So, I take okay, my career. You know that, like you're bowing to pressure. No, no, I'm, not, I'm, not, going to, to I'm not going to let a flaw that I can control affect my health. Oh, no, 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 that's a very interesting question. No, there's no such thing as a perfect body. But there, but there's an idea of what people should look like. Um, before now, especially women, um, at some point in Africa, I, I don't know how I wasn't born in the 17th century. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite interesting, excuse me, to be big and fat. And, you know, what we call obese now was what was attractive. Mm -hmm. But the world has evolved. Well, seven billion people or more in the world. We all look different for a reason, you know. I'm just looking at the audience. We all, you know, even my panelists, <laughs> not anyone has the same face as me. So to assume that we would have the same body, it's an idea. And you would find that the ideal body varies from culture to culture. If you look back in history, it was acceptable, even attractive, for a man or a woman to be really big. I mean, but these days we want a size zero, so it's cultural as opposed to. But you know, to even size zero gets body shamed as mm -hmm. well. Absolutely. So it, it makes nonsense mm -hmm. of the idea that we can conform to something that is 
changing all the time. What, what people want us to look like keeps changing. Hmm. Okay. So what do the average African parent, mm. I've noticed, doesn't exactly take their time to tell their children, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. look beautiful or you yeah, are brilliant exactly. or, or you are something. You yes, know, yes, you don't it, compliment them. Yes, um, it, my son at six years old came back one day from school. I said, Mommy, I want to watch my weight. I said, What? <laughs> six <laughs> years? Why do you want to watch your weight? He yeah. said, I'm too fat. I said, Also, you're fat. And my boy was chubby. Some people know him. Very chubby boy. And why? See, my classmates say, I'm too fat. I say, ah, I'm going to your school tomorrow. Absolutely. I say, You look so handsome. So look at how people admire you. <laughs> well, so I, I went to the school. I went to the school to address it, you mm -hmm. know. So, and I keep, even to date, telling my daughter and my son that, that you look beautiful. You are so beautiful, though. Know? I commend them. So, parents should be able to, you know, um, tell their children how they look, how beautiful they are. I want to let people know that we are all unique in our own ways. We have our own beauty. It was when I grew up, I got to know that I have a very sweet eyes. You know, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you, your eyes are lovely. It's fabulous. <laughs> So I wasn't actually ugly. I know I was so beautiful, but I had that mentality because of the body shaming mm. experience I got from childhood. Wow. Now, getting to you, Precious, you are uh, just to talk straight to you. You're a mind uh, therapist, obviously. Now, there's this saying that hurt people hurt people. Absolutely. Do you think that is the case here for people, all the cyber trolls who just go on? body shaming people and not just online even amongst us here you know big heads big body you're fat you're slim you're thin are, are these people really hurt is that the case here yes and uh, i'll just quickly say something you know when you say the vital world is not real i don't necessarily agree mm. and this is why um the internet is anonymous mm. so it allows us to be who we are what we see online, you know, I, I think a lot of people are ignoring what's happening online to our own peril. The friends who couldn't tell you how they felt and how to open, that's how they felt. Of course. But of course, in real life, you have to be politically correct, you have to care how the person feels, and then you're able to do that. I think the larger question now becomes, and you ask the question, hurting people are hurt centers. What kind of community are we raising? How many of us feel very confident in who we are? Um, when you were sharing, you, you spoke about how your parents you know, didn't affirm you. You said the same thing. Many of us had that experience. I was called the, the brilliant one, not the pretty face. My sister is a looker, uh, but I was the not so pretty one, but the brilliant one. You know? And then those comments start to define who you are. And hurting people, you know, we, we want community. It's all love. But in the reverse, and this is what I mean, you can't be so confident, and I'm not. So let me pull you down, hmm. so that we are all on the same level. Um, I, I'm not pulling you down because I hate you, no. I'm pulling you down because I'm unhappy, hmm. and I want company. Hmm. I don't want to be alone in my sadness. You know, How can I be shamed for my black color, and then you go out there and become some black? Satino. Too exotic. So let me bring all of us Drag to the down. place of well all doodles or whatever. <laughs> that was a very interesting term. Whatever that means. <laughs> okay. Charles, let me have your comments. Um, you, you all have said a lot and I completely um, I won't say I completely agree and I'll say my reasons. First of all, as it concerns body shaming, it's quite. I've had my, my fair share of experiences as well. Okay. But I would say it has pros and cons. Yes. I, I missed all of that. Um, all those darts that are thrown and stuff. I feel. You missed them. I missed all the darts thrown. All the you're dark. All the you're too fat and you're okay. too skinny and stuff. I feel we should not just see the negativities in it. Yeah. So my point is this. I know I'm dark skinned, or I know I'm overweight. I'm obese, and someone throws this in my face. I realize that I'm actually over, um, overweight. If it's something that's within my control, I feel, honestly, that I should take it and work on it. Mm. That's what I feel. So but you if feel... It's not, yeah. Hold on, I need, I need, I need to laugh. <laughs> I don't know how I'm coming from you, but I need to laugh. <laughs> if it's something that's not within my control, then you know what? 
it's, it's just it, it happens it's happened you know uh, um for me personally if it sorry, affects if to, a flaw i, I, I know please so you said sorry you said something about um if if it's something i can't control it has happened it's happened so i should not try to pursue my kind of dream no i'm coming there okay if this is this is my theory if a, a certain body flaw that i have affects my health and affects my career i need to work on it that is my personal conviction. So if I were you, if I were you, like you said, you, you gave a story, you, you, you gave an instance where you had to go for an audition or a job opening and stuff, and then he told you stuff outrightly. Now, if I were you in that situation, okay. you I know what I would do. What would you, you do? I, I would, I would, honestly, I would do that because you I think my kid, yes. I think my career. Okay, that, like you're bowing to pressure. No, no, I'm, like I'm, not going to, pressure. I'm not going to let a flaw that I can control affects my health. Oh, no, 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 that is my personal. That is my personal. Why is it said? Why is it said that lighting up your skin? I'm not saying going from this color to this color will actually affect your health. Because from the 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 okay. I'm just saying. Okay, that's 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 for me. And then you also said that he told you something else. Because you're peeling off your the layer of your skin, which affects your skin. It causes cancer. It causes a whole lot of Skin diseases. I wish I could. I, I'm not a doctor, but I wish I could. I, know. Have, I have theories. <laughs> okay, I have, cool. I've read up a lot about it. I've done some investigation on I've that. Done I know, right? Trust me, at some point in my but life, let me tell you something. Yeah. Guess what? At some point in my life, I'd saved up to buy this cream. I'd bought them. Mm. I was ready to actually. Board. Excuse me, the media house I'm saying is the top media house in Nigeria and I told myself if I can't get that because of this, I definitely would want to do what they asked me to do. But guess so what? I bought the cream. But I read up. That's, that's black satin and this is Charles. I will do Great. it. Great. Okay, you know I what? Will do it. Let's it. Yeah. 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 So we'll go on a break and then we'll come right back. This discussion <laughs> just heated up. <laughs> we'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs> right. Now, um... Coming up next on the show. In the next couple of years, about 10 years, there'll be what is called singularity where it is expected that artificial intelligence will match up to man's intelligence. There has been success stories of, you know, from body shaming. So are we saying that it is completely wrong? Now the problem we have sometimes is we don't discover who we are. Show and we are discussing body shaming. Just before we went on a break, Charles got the ruckus. Yes, Charles, I, I was talking about the fact that if it affects my health or my career, I was I was I was going to do it. And I meant to listen. I'm on television, and we all know you know this. There's this an expected look for you. Uh, uh, it's an expected look when you're on television. That's the truth. You cannot look a certain way and be on television. The truth is, it's the employers, the whole thing. I don't want to say anything. You, you, the, the your, employer, your employer wants a certain look. And if you don't fit into that niche, he's not going to employ you. Now, guess what? It's a tight niche industry. Now, you created something out of your flow. And we appreciate you for that. But some of us. Some of us. Some of us. Some of us. I'm just going to have to go there very quickly. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Yes, I always look for the non-conformist. It, it, it's very boring if we all mm -hmm, think alike. Mm -hmm. So thank you. But I must say this. You used the word flaw and you lost me. Mm -hmm. It's a very subjective world. I'm talking about the rate of suicide. You see, what's very shameful even is we, 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 we don't think of ourselves as human beings anymore. Mm. Let me shock you. Or maybe you already know. In the next 20 years, we'll be competing with artificial intelligence. So if all you have as a human being is the ability to go bleach if you ask to bleach, jump if you ask to jump, act crazy if you ask to act, we're going to be competing with machines who are perfect. Have you seen exactly. the sex dolls? Yes, you know, yes. you are in that industry, so you must know. They're perfect. I was listening to Jack Meyer the other day, and he says, how would humans compete with machines in the next 20 years? We're going to compete with machines with our value systems. We're going to be compete with machines with empathy, with things that make us human beings, not by trying to be perfect. If this lady had to bleach her skin, she would be risking her life. And I must say, it's not worth it. At all. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Your health and your um, it affects career, my health, my You will definitely work on it. Trust me, when you get to bleach your skin, it gets to affect your health. 
because at the end of the day, 30 years from now, you're sick. The so whatever media house is gone down. Yeah. So does that doing... mean that people? Because Charles is not alone in this. There are people who have yes. actually done, done it. it. You know, you yes. have a lot of people who go and starve themselves because maybe they want to compete in the next Miss World, yes. and they just have six months, so they they starve themselves sure. or through and get to size four, and then they sure. become Miss World, and it works for them, right? So there has been success stories of you know from body shaming. So are we saying that it is completely wrong it's the uh, this no, I'm, I'm, to I'm, compromise to, to get what you want like no, as a um, result of body shaming yeah well com coming to compromise uh, he says something about health mm -hmm. uh, yes being overweight is not um actually good for health you no know, if you want to keep Thank a you. nice health now if you're overweight it's for health reason you should be trimmed down you should look at coming down not because someone is body shaming you but this is what charles is saying right yes. charles is saying is charles is saying if i'm fat like completely obese yes. and i'm there forming slim mama <laughs> yes and then some other person walks up to me and says you're fat they might say it bluntly and yes. in a way that would hurt me okay but does it mean that they're body shaming me because to some people people like charles they would feel you're telling me the, the truth. truth i'm denying myself if they don't have a relationship with you, they're body shaming you. Mm. I have absolutely no right to have an opinion about how you are unless I have a relationship with you. Okay. He spoke about boundaries, and that's very sacred. Mm. I'm very sure there are things I will tell Charles here that would disturb him greatly. Sure. I, mm. I, I can guarantee you that. So if you have a relationship with a person, and of course if you must lose weight for health reasons, but, mm. I, but I fear, and I must say this, that we are trying to standardize the world and get people to be a certain way. Nature thrives with variety. We cannot all be the same. Exactly. So we're not all going to be size zeros. We're not all going to be size twenties. And in between that balance, that has to be okay mm. for okay. humanity. Okay. Okay. Well, let me show this. Please, 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 please. You are within the oh, side, body yeah? body shame in uh -huh. there. We are particularly talking on the the color of the skin and the the, the weight size it would sometimes the structure of the way somebody may not be fat but because it's structured like a man yeah. uh, okay some people have a structure we call them uh, tomboys yeah you know i went through that challenge so back at uh, secondary school i used to be very slim mm -hmm. and then when i turned 16 it's like curves from nowhere i was so ashamed of myself because i wasn't just the others they're like really slim and i was just curvy with the bomb <laughs> you know and yeah. for a long time and quite frankly i'm telling you the truth up until now i am still struggling to accept the fact that I am a curvy woman. Why? Because of everything I have been fed when I was young. That is, it, the average woman should be slim. You should not be curvy. When you're too curvy, it's too much and uh, it gets uh, you too much attention. And yes, and yeah. you see people that are slim also go through body shaming. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I know. I know. It's a woman who is very slim. Very. If if it's what we see, I think she should be. Okay. She'd say she's she don't like. Uh, they are calling her Kamala. Yeah. <laughs> if the company says that, okay, now look at a uh, black uh, Satino. Satino. Now, because sometimes the challenges drives us into our purpose. Mm -hmm. Now, she was challenged because she was not given that uh, 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 that job. She found job. She created a job for herself. So, so in everything that happens, it shouldn't be. Uh, we shouldn't particular allow people to direct our lives or the media to direct our lives the way the way it should go or the way we should be now the problem we have sometimes is we don't discover who we are hmm. we should discover who we are we may not there will be problem of how i look 
I want to look, how can I, oh God, I have a lot of things I'm pursuing because I have some, I'm a purpose-driven person and I have the time to sit down and say, oh, I want to look like a soap person or a star or somebody's body shame me. I don't care because the time I have to pursue my purpose in life, who doesn't even give, him, give me the time to think, actually look I think at? Another thing I'm going to add is that um, you know, for, for being obese, I mean, I feel like if you're working on it, you're doing it for your own good. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, when you're, when you're probably trimmed down i mean it helps you health wise but i mean away from like if that's 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 it that's it that one can come be doing it because do of someone but, you, but you shouldn't body shame can, I, i'm, I'm going to i'm going to stay on the weight one because i i, I don't want us to separate this I, i've had too many clients who have attempted suicide and some have been successful mm. because of the weight thing so i i need to stay here there's a psychology to weight gain people are not just fat because they mm -hmm. are silly mm -hmm. people sometimes it's because um you know something is lacking somewhere a lot of times and if you don't deal with that that's why you see when you go on a yo-yo diet two years down the line you're even fatter than when you started because if you don't deal with the side the why it's the same thing with you know the color thing it's the same thing with anything if you don't deal with why am i fat or why don't i like the fact that i'm a curvy woman if you don't solve your why you could get slim, but then you inherit another problem. Mm. Haven't we seen? <laughs> thank you. Haven't we seen good-looking people who have committed suicide? Mm -hmm. Haven't we seen? And we're talking media now. It's I, I, and I'm afraid if you check the statistics, you know, some some, some people think it's a very depressive industry. Mm. Haven't you seen stars who have killed themselves? So we need to start to ask even deeper questions. I liked what you said about who, who am I. I'm very interested in children because I feel that that's where the salvation can happen. Mm -hmm. We need to start to raise children who have a sense Thank of self-mastery. Mm. <laughs> children who are not interested in what anyone says. Mm -hmm. Nobody's opinion counts. Mm -hmm. Because you see, for me as a human being, the best I want to be is the best precious can be. I'll give you an example. If Mark Zuckerberg was competing with someone, what would he have become? Mm. There was no Facebook. Mm -hmm. He created it. You see, you see where I'm going? Mm -hmm. He created it. So we all have our own unique, we are beautiful like that. Yeah. You know, you go to nature and you see some things, you know, we term some animals ugly, we term some beautiful. But nature is beautiful mm. and humans are beautiful. And we need to understand and also appreciate that so that we don't try to standardize all of us. So I think um, I like the fact that um, we touched on what artificial intelligence will do um, in the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. And I think everyone here should understand. Now, the algorithm of how a normal social media site operates is the fact that they feed you what you sort of like. So if you're somebody who's always searching for weight loss, that's what you're going to be seeing. Yeah. If someone who's always serving a particular issue, that is what they're going to be seeing because for them, it is first about the ads they have to sell to you. So you must understand. Now, so now this brings me to the point when I said it's not the real world. Yes, people might hide under it to do certain things, but the reality is that my point to you is this, for you to understand, that people lie a lot or they make people believe what is not true online or social media. And that's why from your, a psychological point of view, you must be sure of who you are. Your identity. Know thyself. Mm. Yeah. Stop allowing what people say. <laughs> Stop allowing what people say to you online to affect you. Because we haven't seen anything yet. We're entering the era of mm -hmm. artificial intelligence Absolutely. and machine learning. The point where, in fact, in the next couple of years, about 10 years, there'll be what is called singularity, where it is expected that artificial intelligence will match up to man's intelligence. You know what that means? That simply means that a robot or a machine can tell you about love. A robot or machine can make you feel sad, can cook, can, do can send uh, messages that they know that if they send this message at this point in time, it will make you feel sad. And when you are sad, they can sell you an ad. At that point, you'll buy that ad. Hmm, That's wow. where the world is going. Yeah. Wow. Now, still, still on YouTube, Jonathan, I'd like you.
<laughs> yeah, we've been talking about uh, body shaming, but it's as if we've looked at it from the angle of women. Because when you talk about being overweight or underweight, it's mostly a female thing, or you have alopecia, you don't have hair, and all, all, all that. It's mostly for women. But then I also know that there are some men who get bald, maybe at the age of 15 <laughs> or thereabout, and then there are men who are. Uh, athletic like you and then there are others with pot belly also so what forms of body shaming do men go through could you well, educate us I on mean, that you mentioned one uh, a bald head um, like it looks like I'm getting one now <laughs> 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 um, and seriously just like she said I think I think uh, for the young people before I go to that you must learn to find fun in who you are you must I mean when I was young too, I was also called them um, tolly tofu all sorts of things you know and so those days, I would dress myself as, as um, Chukameka, the tall guy, you know, the tall fool. You know, I, I made it fun. Yeah. So when you know I'm making it fun, it can't get to me. Yes. You know, I block it up. You know? so, so, so even for men, I'm sure that your height to certain times will be your... People will tell me, people tell me, oh, but you're too tall. You know, so your weight also is a pro, can be a, a challenge or mm -hmm. something that people will, will insult about. Even when you look nice as a man, say, man, this guy looks gay, you know? <laughs> Yeah, the guy looks fine. He looks well to him. So the guy looks gay. So, so it, it can happen to both, both male and female. You know, mm. uh, recently my six-year-old son was crying because his cousin told him that he wears a size two, that his feet is too small. Are you serious? Like seriously, he was crying. He said, he said my feet is too small. I wear the size two. And I'm like, no, you don't wear the size two. And besides, you are who God says you are. Yeah. So when anybody tells you anything, tell them that I am carefully and wonderfully made. We have to do that in children. Because honestly, I am in a cyber world. Mm. I am in the virtual world. Honestly, for the young people coming, I, I, sometimes I'm like, do they even understand what is coming, coming at you? So it's going to get more brutal? Yes! Mm. Because let me give you an instance. If I'm on, on, on Twitter and I want to troll you, most of those troll accounts you see, it's not, it's not somebody typing it to. It's a simple bot who has been programmed to send one million messages. So what? the bot keeps sending every 10 seconds or 10 minutes, yeah. you're fat. You are and you're getting that. So it's you're a pulling yourself over a machine. It's a machine. It's a bot. It's yeah. not a human being. So by the time you learn these things, you will learn to understand block, delete, block, 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 all right, so we'll go on a break. This is still the Inside Out Show. And when we come back, more discussion on this. We hear from the audience. And then Charles will tell us what's going on on the social media. Just talking about this. We'll be right back. Coming up next on the show. It, it, it centers you. I have two children now, and I am constantly affirming them. Talking about uh, friendship. Um... Any friend who does not accept you the way you are, you should forget about that friend. You are fat, you are thin, you look ugly, so you should try and work on it. You can do cosmetic surgery and change your yes. You can do cosmetic and change your yes. show and so far it has been a very very interesting discussion i have the hottest panels and then charles is just blowing fire <laughs> but you know what we're gonna get to you uh charles and see what's going on in social media but first let me throw this at you um precious you talked about it a bit but we didn't really um talk about it that much what is the role of a parent to curb how does how would a parent help curb this Body shaming. That's a drama. great question. That's a great question. Parenting is everything. Um, mm. you, you find in psychology that most of the things we treat later in life as traumas from childhood. So, you know, from zero to six years, those are the formative years. And what happens then, you know, in terms of confidence, self awareness, how open minded you are, how you perceive the world, for most of us, comes from our parenting programming, you know, all mm. that talk. So it's so important for parents to affirm their children. There's something my father would always say, you know, my, my father calls me a force of nature. <laughs> ah, yes. He says, oh, that one, she's a force of nature. And it's helped me, you know, it's helped me, you know, in the work that I do now, in the things that I've done with my life. You know, you, you look at it, you wake up in the morning and you think, oh, my God, I'm a force of nature. It, it, it centers you. I have two children now and I am constantly 
affirming them. My daughter knows how beautiful she is. I mean, she's the most beautiful girl in the world. Oh. She, she's somewhere around there. You should see her. Oh, wow. She's a looker. You know? <laughs> Thank you very much. My son is extremely... I mean, you, he's met my children, and I'm sure he would agree. My son is extremely good-looking, and I will not tell him anything else. I affirm them, and these are so important. I'm not saying that we should um, not create some balance um, where children have to know, you know, in terms of how they you know they show up in the world but it's so important for you to hear at home from your mom from mm. your dad that you are worth it and you deserve your place in this world children need to hear that Thank you very much. okay all right charles let's hear what's going on online all right um <clears throat> uh, okay so the question actually was um pardon me do you think it's proper to insult people based on how they look and why is that? And Blessing says no, because there is a reason for every act. Tolerance and correcting in love and respect, in brackets it puts courtesy applied, does wonders. Charity says no, it is not proper. Some people insult based on how the not so good looking people treat them. Besides, God, God is responsible for how some people look. Some, I wonder why she used some. Why others are responsible for <laughs> how they look. Um, Shala says, on a lighter note, I insult my friends on a daily basis based on how they look. I call it friendship and unexplainable love, but it's not proper. And uh, Ola says, it's not proper because you must not insult what you can't, what you can't create. We should learn to respect each other. Uh, God doesn't, God did not create us equally. Hmm. Okay. We've been discussing body shaming. Now it's time to hear from my audience. Let's, let's hear you. Okay, I like the way your guests spoke. They spoke really well, but I would really like to agree with Charles based on if you have a flaw. And let me know use the word flaw because we should use the word flaw. If you have something in you that people complain about, you should try and change it. Talking about bleaching, yes, I did some bleaching on my skin, although I'm still dark, but I tried and tone it up a little because of if you, like for example now, if you are fat, I watched a lady, she was fat, she was doing weather news, and I couldn't even think of one word she said. So I feel if there's a flaw in you, you should try and work with your, you should not just say, oh, they are criticizing me, they hate me, they hate us, or this thing. You should work with yourself. I wanted to become a bouncer when I was growing up, but I knew that I was thin. I couldn't be a bouncer. If you want to work, yes, now, yes, now, if you want to work with TV, if you want, if you, are, if you are planning on going into, if you are planning on going into TV, because I heard, I read of a story that I posted on a blog of Zoe Smiley, former Miss UK. She returned her crown because she got fat and nobody was willing to employ her. Or probably if she created a show called uh, Weight Watchers, just to watch her weight, she reduced that weight and to help women reduce their weight. So body shaming, whether you like it or not, you might pretend that, oh, it doesn't exist. People are not, people don't care. Um, I don't care what people say, but whether you like it or not, you are fat, you are thin, you look ugly, so you should try and work on it. You can do cosmetic surgery and change your yes. You can do cosmetic and change your music. Okay. Anybody want to react to that? Those are strong views. I, I would just quickly say, and, I, and I, again, you said, like I say, I'm always looking for the non-conformist. Okay. I have nothing against cosmetic surgery if you must. Be safe though. But the, the thing about the weather lady example that you gave, it's about you. You are the one who needs to change your opinion, not the person on the screen. That's another opinion to the one you just gave. So you go change yourself. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so let's have our next one, please. Well, I see body shaming as a misconception. Body shaming is just like judging a book based on its cover. So someone has not taken time to peruse it, but it just uh, giving opinion based on the quality of the cover. I think what defines us as an individual is not the structure of our body or our facial expression. What matters is the content, what we are inside, the content of our character. So we need to just appreciate the way God made us. So when we appreciate ourselves, then our confidence, our self-esteem will boost. Okay. Okay. All right. What about if you're in friendship, housing, girl friendship, and then you don't want to lose the friendship, and your friend always calls his social name like Blackie, he likes you are too fat, you are too such name like that, and then you don't want to lose the friendship because you have something that you always gain from the friends. What are you going to do? <laughs> 
precious. Okay. Um, okay. The friend talking about uh, friendship. Um, any friend who does not accept you the way you are, you should forget about that friend. That is my. <laughs> so you forget about anybody. Whatever you feel you're getting from that friendship, accept yourself. The reason why you feel you're getting something is because you've not accepted who you are. Accept who you are, that you are created for a purpose. You have your, the reason why God created you like that was for a reason. Accept yourself. Then you see people who accept you coming to make friends with you. Okay. okay. Let's have the next comment. Is it only in Nigeria? Because... I've not heard something like that outside Nigeria. Is it only in this Africa we have something like this? Mm -hmm. As an individual, what would one do when you are faced individually? What, what would you do facing this kind of challenge? First of all, I think I can answer the one about uh, but whether body shaming exists only in Nigeria. No, recently, uh, those of us who are active mm -hmm. on Instagram would hear about the story of this young girl who had alopecia that Tara Banks was fighting for online because she was being bullied in school and being body shamed by her peers. And then at some point she said, you know what, someone took off her wig because she, you know, wears a lot of wigs to cover up her alopecia. And someone put up the wig in school and everybody was laughing at her. So she, she told herself, you know what, since you all pulled off my wig and you're laughing at my hair, how about I just shave off the entire hair and wear this as a look? And you know, she did that and then some uh, TV in the US carried it and then everybody's talking about her, everybody's applauding her for standing up to the people who are body shaming her. So mm. it doesn't just, um, it's not just about Nigeria, Nigeria, all over the world. The world is now becoming a global village, so it's, it's everywhere. I mean, like she said, um, as we grew up, a mm -hmm. lot of things started changing and people started having, uh, the computer age started com coming in, we millennials started coming in, and I mean, we just grew up like that. And unfortunately, very unfortunately, it's getting worse day by day. Like you and, and, and <laughs> yourself. Unfortunately. <laughs> but the most important thing, like he or he, like everyone has said here, yeah, um, what's important is know thyself, know yourself. If you know yourself well, if you're faced with that kind of situation, you will, you will just go past it. Mm. <laughs> okay, let's have another comment. I, I, in fact, I've been so, I've been so inspired, uh, entertained, educated a lot. a lot, informed and all that. One thing I want to give to the audience, most, most, most especially our upcoming youth, that is for, there's no how body shaming or comments or such things, you know, there's no way one will not talk down at you or talk at you, especially for students that are schooling, you know, you are blacky, you are a robot, you are this, even while growing. You know, but one thing is for you to just discover yourself. No, you should not let it get at you. You should know who you are. But when you know who you are as a child of God, that you are beautifully and wonderfully made, as Emeka said earlier, which I agree at. You know, you will overcome every other thing. Even as a married woman, as, a, as an adult, as an adult, you will still be body shamed. You be, you, they'll still talk at you. They will, you know, but you have to groom yourself. You have to be strong and know who you are, that baby. I'm not moved by that, and you move on in life. Okay. All right. Any other comment? If a parent gives birth, is, there, is it bad for a parent to give the child a tribal mark? Oh, oh yeah, that's another that form of body shaming. Tribal yes. marks. It culture. is, and it's well, very well, serious. Culture. I, I, I don't think. The Thank you for bringing that up. Great question. But please, let's also be mindful here. A lot of the things that we're worried about these days are Western constructs. Back in the day, Africans mark themselves. It wasn't body shaming. It was a way either for religious identification. purposes, identification. for identification. So I would say let's know our history. That would help with that question. It wasn't body shaming. The people who marked their children was either you were ill, they wanted to, you know, it was some sort of medication given or to show that you're from a certain tribe. So we have to also be careful because even as we evolve, because humanity must seek expansion. Let's be mindful so we don't start to hate where we're coming from. Remember, but everything has roots. Mm -hmm. The thing is, I does, that, okay. does that make it okay? Because I have a friend, mm -hmm. she has this, I think the each tribe, I think for the Igbo tribe is usually yeah. like this, like one, two short straight lines. Yeah. 
she hates it her face disgusts her she piles up makeup each time she cannot go out anywhere without wearing makeup yeah. even if it's just foundation on the cheeks yeah right so does it does is is this still acceptable as this age and era nobody identifies anybody by your tribal mark anymore true it's, mm -hmm. so so this is something again great you know example about your friend it will help us not to worry about the things we cannot change i'll give you an example most of us can't change where we were born or who gave birth to us what you can do with your life is going forward that's all your power so worrying about what the decisions her parents made at the time that it was made depending on the kind of education they had it was okay and we need to respect things that were done out of love as well what i mean is as far as they understand i can guarantee in the next 20 years our children will be on this show telling us that whatever you did was nonsensical you shouldn't have done because humanity will what always evolve expansion mm. all right fantastic okay so we have gotten to the place where i just need to get your final words on this topic body shaming starting with you success oh i will say discover the reason why you're created your purpose be purpose driven when you find who you are you won't be you won't be bothered by whatever anybody anybody will say about how you look mm -hmm. and also don't body shame yourself some people body shame themselves okay uh, well i mean for me i would say that you should know yourself um what you see online may not always be true so please know yourself so that what people say will not get to you easily okay I, I, I try to encourage um, my kind of people. Um, I mean, I have a contest now for dark skin girls. And but you do know that the highest paid model in the world are uh, dark is, skin girls. Yeah, completely <laughs> dark. She charges fifteen thousand dollars an hour. I know. So um, I, I feel like if you're in a space where you can help. Um, it's just very unfortunate that uh, the youth still don't get it. They still feel like. Um, I mean, we, I still have to be like this kind of person or I still have to be this kind of person. You can be who you are and be a better version of who you are. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can just be who you are and be great at, at it. At the end of the day, it, you, are, you are on this journey by yourself. I mean, no one is on this journey with you. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you have got to answer to. So whatever you're doing, make sure it's good in your sight and in sight of God. Yeah. And finally, practice. I just have one final thought. Don't be the person causing someone harm. Don't be the body shamer. Don't be the, you know, cause for pain. I mean, what, what's the gain? Making someone feel bad, terrible, or worse, commit suicide. So we can, maybe after this, should just take a pledge not to be the cause of someone else's pain. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. And Charles, I know I'm coming to you. Yes. Uh, the great Martin Luther King Jr. said something. He said that I have a dream that someday my children will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. But guess what? When nobody wants to see the content because of the color of the skin, what do we do? What I will do is I will fight until you see my content by any means possible. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. And what I would say personally is you have a choice people would always body shame you. And like Chukwemeka said, brace yourself. It's probably going to get worse. People are more loose, especially out there on social media. If you have a Facebook account, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, all of it, get ready because it's going to get worse. However, we are making effort to change the narrative, which is why we're discussing this show today. We hope that it makes as much impact as we want it to be. To, to. However, make a conscious choice to tell yourself that i am not what other people think of me what i tell myself is what matters and having said that it's also important you tell yourself the truth if you look at yourself and you realize i'm obese i could do better then do better or if you look at yourself and you feel you know what i'm not taking good care of myself then do better work on your self-esteem don't take away inferiority complex from yourself affirm do your daily affirmation i do a lot of daily affirmation every day and it really helps me i think yellow happiness 
<laughs> All right, so on the note of that yellow happiness, see you on the next episode of the Inside Out Show. Don't forget to follow us on our social media pages. That's the Inside Out Show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'm not forgetting our partners uh, in this show. That's Beauty Bio, Malisha, DJ Rabu, Fortney's, and Aquadana, KGM Industries, Nigeria Limited. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. See you on the next episode. God bless you. Bye. <laughs>